head here now to interview and, and to meet with Matthew. Um, I would love to hear your questions as we continue to talk. Even if you think we might cover the question, send it out there anyway, and we'll keep track of that. And if we don't cover it, um, we'll make notes of it and circle back to that. And so without further ado, I'm going to invite my friend Matthew uh, to come join us as we begin a discussion on uh, the purpose and the how, do, how is it that we pray. And so let's uh, bring Matthew up on the screen, Nathan. Hey, Matthew. How's, how's it going? Pretty good, pretty good. Excellent. Things out in Cochrane are going well? Yeah, it was a nice sunny day today. I got a sunburn. Excellent. Well, that you're fair-skinned uh, living in your cave of office. Um, you need to get out and get some sun every once in a while and get your vitamin D back up. Very true. All right. Well, Matthew, we're going to talk about prayer tonight, and I'm looking forward to, again, got your notes that you sent me. Uh, I'm looking forward to the discussion and the insight that you have. And so I'm just going to turn over to you. If I asked you the question, am I praying correctly? Uh, what would be, how would you respond to me? Mm. Well, first thing I would say, even before anything else, is the idea that uh, God would, you know, not hear our prayer or would not value our prayers highly if we didn't pray just right. We have to make sure that we don't think that way. Mm. God is a God of grace and he wants to connect with us. Right. So when we pray, even if it may not be the perfect way, God will be there. And God, God is not dependent upon us saying precisely the right series of words before he'll listen or before he will act. He knows what's in our hearts before we even start. Right, right. So when we pray, we can pray boldly and confidently, trusting that he has uh, a plan and a direction and that he's going to be hearing us. Okay, yeah. That is nice good. out of the gate thing. Cool, that is some good news. And uh, I know when I was young, uh, exploring who God was and, and this idea people had told me that, uh, and by young, I mean teenager, late teens. Uh, and even when I became a Christian, I still, I had these questions about prayer and what does it mean to pray and how does God hear our prayers? Is there a formula? All those kind of things. So that is good news that, uh, that really it's God who's desiring to hear us mm -hmm. and not about us hitting the right notes or singing the right tune or um, playing the right game. Uh, this is about relationship. And so uh, that is awesome. All right. Well, where where in Scripture can we get some guidance and direction in terms of what is it what does it mean to pray or how do we pray and those kinds of things? Mm. Well, first of all, it is through the Bible that we hear from God that God speaks the most clearly to us. We can actually read and and bring in the direct word of God and the words for our lives. So, in general, the whole Bible actually teaches us to pray because it causes a reaction. It confirms truth to us. The Holy Spirit makes that truth alive in our hearts. And then we respond to that truth in prayer. Right. As God speaks to us, we speak back. And it is a two-way relationship. Not just through the Bible, the Spirit speaks to us in, in subtler ways. But the most clear way that we'll have is through the Bible. So... When we're looking at prayer, it's kind of important to go back to the roots. The The main passage, of course, is well known. It's Matthew 6, uh, 9 to 13, right. the Lord's Prayer. I think we can all say it by heart. If I was to ask you right now, let's put you on the spot, Tyler. Yeah. Tell me the Lord's Prayer without it, without any hints, though. All right. Sorry. I was actually just checking with Nathan because we do we did have a slide for that, but we don't have it. So now I've got to, I've got to pull it out. But uh, our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy word be done. Will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts or trespasses and whatever verse that, or translation we remembered it in. As we forgive those who have trespassed or sinned or done something against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Amen. And this is a, this is a key prayer. When people came to Jesus and they said, Lord, teach us to pray. Jesus obliged. And he said, this is a way to pray. Now, Jesus wasn't saying this is the only prayer that you can ever pray. You know, right. We just have to sit in our prayer closet over and over praying the Lord's Prayer. But within the Lord's Prayer are all the key elements that should be with us as we pray. So first of all, you have adoration and praise. Okay. The, the way the Lord's Prayer starts is by saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Right. And that's where we start. Yeah, and it, I mean, I think that's it's such a good point that prayer begins with God. We hear mm -hmm. his words to us through the Bible. Um, and it also begins with our recognition of who God is. 
And so as he's speaking to us, as we read scriptures, we see the faithfulness of God from Genesis to Revelation through all the ups and downs, turmoils that Israel went through, that the church has gone through, that we today are experiencing. And God's faithfulness reigns because he is holy and he's calling us to holiness and to pursue him. And so, I mean, it starts with that, those words, but, and those words are lived out in Jesus, which is the crazy part to me is that he, he came, he taught his disciples to pray this way, to recognize the holiness of God, um, and that we enter into God's holiness through Christ, uh, through Jesus. Um, that's an incredible story, even in just in that first line. And so we begin with this recognition, as you say, about the holiness of God uh, and his name and the importance of that name. And uh, where does Jesus lead us from there? Well, another aspect that we see in that, too, is a little bit, as you said, God is God, we are not. When we pray, our mission is not to get God to see things our way, hmm. but rather to move ourselves onto God's plan and God's will. So the recognition of God in the beginning is, is also saying, you are the one who's holy, you are the one who's God. My task as I pray is to come to you to get what I need from you. That's why Jesus spent so much time off with his father is because he said, I only do my father's will. Huh. And Christ lived the perfect sinless life. Right. That's the example that we have in the beginning of this prayer. When we recognize God for who he is as we pray and as we think of everything in our Christian life, then our life becomes conformed to a right way of walking with him. Hmm. Yeah, I was reading uh, recently, Tim Keller has a book that came out about six years ago called Prayer. Uh, it's very to the point. And even just in the introduction, he talks about this kind of the when asked what's the what is prayer uh, that historically there's a couple of different thoughts. The one is kind of this mystic communion with God, um, and then the second is this supplication before God, asking God that His will be made known or, or manifest here on earth. And uh, of course, as Keller would, he he puts these two together. He says prayer is not one or the other; it's both. And I just want to read a quote from that because I thought it was a great reminder to us about prayer, that prayer is both conversation, us asking, mm -hmm. talking, uh, interacting with God, but it's also an encounter with God. He says prayer is both conversation and encounter with God. And so for me, when I pray, sometimes I think, oh, I just need to pray about this, or I need to pray before dinner or whatever. And, and, and Keller really brings in that gravity of what that means, that I'm not just praying a blessing over my food, I'm encountering God. I'm coming before the holy, hallowed God. Uh, encountering him and recognizing that it's his provision that has brought this food before me. Uh, sure, I went to do the work and the, you know, the church in my case paid me and blah, 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 but, but all things come from God. And so um, prayer really is this conversation and this encounter. And I appreciate what Keller has to say about that. Yeah, that's so true. And, and when we're beginning that process to have our mind right moves us then into the next stage. The next stage that Christ has for us is contrition, and confession. We go from thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, to talking about our needs, uh, but also talking about how much we need him. So when we're, when we're praying, it's okay to ask for things, and petitions and supplications are key, but a recognition that the first thing we need to do is get right with God. We are always, in our day-to-day -day life, sinning. That's going to be part of our life, we want to, of course, grow in our sanctification, grow in our ability not to sin, but there will never be a day where we don't need Jesus. So as we pray, it's important first that we recognize that we are sinners, and then that we confess those sins and get our, our accounts paid up with God. Make sure that we're right with God, that there's no outstanding things that are, that are perhaps creating a division between us and God. Yeah. When we sin... We're effectively saying, God, you don't know what you're talking about, hmm. and I'm going to do it my way. And it was the same thing from the Garden of Eden right on through. They, you know, the devil said, you can be like God, knowing good from evil. You can make the choice. Right. And every time we sin, we're making a choice to go against what God says is good and to do hmm. our good. So to confess and then to repent from those sins and turn from them sets us up for the rest of what we have to do in prayer, because we now know that there's nothing between us and God. Right. And can you maybe, just two quick things, um, you use the word contrition. Um, can you just define that a little bit for us? 
Yeah, that's a good old fashioned word. Contrition is to have a contrite heart, to admit the situation that I have in sin and to say, I need to recognize my sin. I need to repent, but I need to be broken about sin. Sin is not just something that we go, la, 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 and it's not a big deal, but it should break our hearts to realize that I've done something to to go against God when Christ himself died on the cross for me, and yet I still chose to sin. And that should weigh on us, not as a, a burden that can never be lifted, not as a condemnation, for there's no condemnation in Christ, but it should cause our heart to feel the mm-hmm. sadness of sin. And do you have any advice or direction, um, guidance for, I mean, I've, I've got a million thoughts going through my head in, in this, because one, this idea of contrition, I fully agree with you. I fully agree that that our hearts need to break. Um, we need to be broken for the things in our lives that we hold on to, that God says, no, 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 give those over to me. Uh, but how do we, I don't know how to ask this well, but how do we guard against beating ourselves up? to a monk back in yeah. you know, five, six, seven hundred years ago that, uh, you know, I need to beat, physically beat this out of me. I need to feel bad about myself. I can't live free. I, I'm not allowed to be happy because of the weight of the sin that that is breaking my heart. How do we guard against that? Because at least it, I would say that that doesn't really recognize the freedom that we have in Christ mm. if Amen. we're self-flagellating about it. So. Uh, beat yeah. yourself up about it. So how can one guard their heart, be broken for their sin, uh, but at the same time be free to live as um, mm. those given that life through Christ? Yeah. Well, and that's where the hope comes in. First John tells us, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Mm. As we talked about with the scapegoat, this sin is removed, and with Christ, unlike with the scapegoat, it's not just sent off into the desert, but it is actually gone. It has mm-hmm. been paid. So though we have to feel a, a deep sense of what sin is, that should lead us then to a joy. When mm-hmm. we confess our sins, when we have a contrite heart and we come before God and we say, I have sinned, please forgive me, we can go from that prayer in confidence knowing that not only has he forgiven it, but it's wiped clean. There's that old song I might have told you about last time that I love to listen to that says, it's only the first time. He's forgotten the last time. The moment we pray, his grace takes away the stain of our sin. So know that in God's eyes, it's only the first time. He's already there to to hear your prayer and forgive you again. Right. And this is a very deep truth that God does not keep a tally list and say, well, look at you. That's the 37th time you've sinned in that way. But he says, I have forgotten. I have put it on the bottom of the ocean floor. When you repent, it is done. And he is faithful and just. He is always sure and we can always trust him. Right. And again, I mean, I was had a question, but I think you've answered it is, what about those scenarios where we find ourselves are broken about our sin in this moment? Uh, we confess them and then we find ourselves right back there again and again and again. And uh, But you answered that in the, the lyrics of that song that says, mm. when I confess, um, in a sense, the next time is the first time. Yeah. So uh, that is, again, great news. That's hopeful news. Mm-hmm. Um, and something we need to practice probably. We, we, we always want to practice uh, getting rid of the sin, but we probably, mm. maybe in this day and age and, and some of the struggles that people face, maybe we need to practice living free a little bit more. Um, not free to do whatever we want. This isn't a, a sense of, I'm free to, to run amok, but a freedom that God has actually forgiven me. God has given in Christ, uh, I am free to become all he has created me to be and uh, yeah. taken that sin away. Yeah. Well, and the image that I love to use is when we talk about the walk of faith, it's you and, you know, God and you walking down the road and it's, it's a dirt road. It's not a nice, clean, paved one. And there's muddy pots, parts and there's big stones that you could stub your toe on and there's patches where you could trip and fall and end up laying in the mud. But it doesn't do us any good when we sin, when we trip and fall and end up in the mud, to lay there dumping the mud on top of ourselves and saying, woe is me. Hmm. We have to get up, we have to clean ourselves off, and we have to continue to walk with God down the road. And he's standing there picking us up out of that mud, dusting us off, cleansing us, and saying, walk with me. He never looks at us as we sin and says, wow, I'm shocked because he paid those sins, those particular sins on the cross. 
So if he knew you were going to sin, it doesn't mean he's happy about it, right. but he's ready. Right. And when you come and say, Lord, I sin, he doesn't go, oh, I can't believe that you would do that. Right. He already paid it. Hmm. Very good. That's awesome stuff. I, uh, I was listening to uh, a conversation between a couple of pastors. One is pastor of a huge church down in the U.S., and the other uh, is pastor here up in Canada, but also is, has a leadership network that he kind of runs and whatnot. And uh, this young pastor of the U.S., he's I think he's 32 or something like that, uh, of this mega church and uh, in Oklahoma. And he was saying when he first became pastor, um, the word that God had given him was stride. And he said he didn't even know what the word stride meant. He had to go look it up. And mm. uh, and this whole idea that it's not a, a it's not a running through everywhere as quick as possible that our christian walk is not it, it is a walk it's not a run it's yeah. not a sprint it's a marathon it's a long distance keep going one step after the other and he said um and that's really that word for him uh, just continues to resonate continues to be a reminder and, and in this interview i listened to them um i don't actually know how long it was because i listened to it in high speed to kind of blast through it but um he, he used that word a number of times and within multiple examples with his family, with leadership at the church, with his own walk in Christ, that uh, as one who, he seemed very high strung. He seemed like a guy that had a propensity for running. Uh, he said, no, that word stride just keeps coming back again and again. And, and that would fit in with that, that description that you gave, the metaphor you gave about walking on this dusty road, um, just yeah. one step uh, after another. More than applaud, it's not just grinding it out. Uh, but it's a stride and an intentional act of going uh, the direction of Jesus. And so yeah. uh, that's some good stuff. All right. Well, we have a few minutes left here. Uh, we've only gotten to the first little bit of uh, the Lord's Prayer. Is there anything? Do you want to let's tap? Let's go to that last bit. I'm going to check and see if we have any questions that have popped up from people who are watching with us. But uh, lead us into that final bit of the of the prayer of, that Jesus prayed, Matthew. Sounds good. Well, he does go on in the prayer after, you know, in there he says, give us this day our daily bread. And it is right and good that we should give our prayers, our petitions, our supplications to God. The most common form of prayer in the Bible is people asking God for things, mm -hmm. petitioning, praying, seeking for what they don't have. And God is the one who is the provider for all of our needs, spiritual, mental, physical, whatever it may be. Right. So it is right and good that we should go to God and ask for things. But we don't go to him like he's the heavenly bellboy with the faith, health, wealth, gospel kind of idea where we snap our fingers and we say, bring it on down. Right. We go to him as our father who gives us what we need. And we say, dad, I need these things. I think. Nevertheless, just like Jesus did, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Huh. I'm asking but I trust you will give me even better than I could ever ask or imagine. So when I pray, I pray in the recognition that God's will is the most important thing as I ask for things. Hmm. Very good. That is some good stuff. And so uh, to wrap it up then, or to sum it up, we come recognizing who God is, holy, uh, that everything comes from him, that his clearest word to us is, is in scripture, is through the Bible. Um, then we come recognizing who we are, uh, our sinfulness and our brokenness and needing to confess that, our contriteness, as you used, um, to come before God and, and recognize that, that we need to be broken and pour out our sins and confess before him, uh, clearing a path to um, engage in conversation and relationship building and ask and seek uh, his will in our life, that prayer is not about us getting what we want, uh, so us becoming more like Christ and, and wanting what he wants, that we might become all he has created us to be. Um, did I cover it all? Did I, did I get all your, I think you nailed it pretty well. Yeah. All right. And Sounds it, good. I wasn't even looking at my notes, so you must have <laughs> communicated extremely clearly, which is awesome. Um, I'm just going to double check one last time, uh, with the crew here. Is there any questions to address team? No, Nope. it doesn't look like there's been any questions. That's how thorough you have been, uh, which is much appreciated. And I am not at all surprised. Uh, and so we are going to wrap it up there. Uh, church, I would invite you, anyone watching tonight, please join us again on Sunday as we gather together as the church in worship. Thank you, Matthew, for joining us, uh, for being a part of this Wednesday night. And uh, I have not worked far enough ahead to know what we're going to cover next week, but it's going to be another conversation, another direction straight out of your questions, church. 
and we were going to provide you with some answers. And so we thank you for joining us. Uh, let I, My challenge to each one of us is tonight, go to God in prayer. Uh, Matthew mm. had a quote here from Martin Luther that says, It is a good thing to let prayer be the first business of the morning and the last at night. Guard yourself carefully against those false, deluding ideas which tell you, Wait a little while and I will pray in an hour. First I must mm. attend to this or that. Let us, church, go before the holy God, confess with our contrite hearts that we are sinful, but he is holy, that he laid his life down for us, that we might be called sons and co sons and children, sons and daughters of God, co-heirs with Christ. You are his people. He is our God. Let us go to him in prayer. Father, we thank you for tonight. I thank you for my friend Matthew and for the church that is before us as we continue the conversation as your people. May we honor you with all that we do. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Matthew. Have a great night. We will uh, talk soon. Excellent. All Have right. a good one. Bye-bye.